Thank you. So this year, my typical Valen talk is not really a Valen talk, but more a desktop security talk. Uh, so while porting Quinn to Valen, I came into the situation that I had to look at security because Quinn takes over lots of functionality from X and we finally have the possibility to make that secure. And then I started to look at it and try to make it secure and realized it's not possible because the foundations are broken, are not secure at all. So with this talk, I want to uh, show a little bit where we have problems for the security of the whole stack, what we need to do to improve that. I will start a little bit with showing the typical problems you have on X11 and then show what Valent changes, what Valent doesn't change, and then present some ideas how we as a community can improve the um, security of the Linux desktop. So I'll start uh, with X11 and I'll start with the typical thing which is known for X11 and that is the keylogger. So getting all key events is part of the protocol. Um, up until a month ago I thought it's possible to protect against by using um, the crap keyboard command but then I noticed that since X input to one or later you get all raw key press and raw key release events um, even if an application grabbed the keyboard. So even if the screen is locked, another application can monitor all key events. That are native key codes, so you still need to translate them. You send them through uh, LixXKB common, and then you can do great things with it. For example, in Plasma 5.8, we have modifier only shortcuts, like you press the meta key and it will open the, um, um, the start menu. That is based on exactly that. I'm listening for all raw key presses and all key release events, send it through XKB common to figure out whether a modifier is pressed, whether another key is pressed in addition, and then can decide whether only the modifier key was pressed. So that has valid use cases, but it also means that uh, you can easily build a keylogger with it. Now you might think that keyloggers just don't matter to you. But with the keylogger, you can do very, very evil things if you get all key events. Imagine you open console. The keylogger knows that you just typed in console and opened it. Then you do SSH to your server. It knows that you did SSH. And then you type in your passphrase. So it has the passphrase. It's running as your user. And it also has access to your SSH key. So it can do the same thing. It can listen for when you do su or sudo, it can listen when you go to your bank account and add your number and PIN. It gets your Facebook password, your GPG passphrase, your SSEK passphrase, whatever you want. It will have everything you do. Every thought you type into your computer is available to a keylogger. Now KDE's vision is that we improve the privacy of the, uh, of the user on the computer system. So this is really a fundamental aspect of what KDE wants to solve and keyloggers are preventing to have a private system. It's just not possible with an architecture which allows keyloggers. Now we can of, with X11 do all the other wonderful things like doing the opposite, injecting key events. This is now in um, demonstration I sent to the Dolphin and Kate mailing list in the uh, beginning of this year. It's actually not a vulnerability in Dolphin or in Kate. It's just making use of what the core X11 protocol allows you to do. So what I did is I had a small application listening to all windows which gets opened, then looking whether it's a, uh, whether it's a Dolphin, looking whether it's running as root and then starting to inject key events, the key events to open the embedded console, which is F4, and then I could type any command I wanted as root, just because Dolphin was running as root. Uh, and that can be done with pretty much everything. Uh, you get all the state in X11. And yeah, so what can you as an application developer do to protect against that if you know that you could be abused if you run as root 
and someone does something evil with you. Well, the most important thing is to never run graphical applications as root. Um, we have been telling that to users for a long time, but it doesn't help. They still do it. They think they have to do it. So what I suggest applications to do is to add a check before creating the GUI application and check whether you run as root and just quit with an error message shown to the console maximum print line don't open an x window don't open any window if you open a window you're owned it's too late now obviously there are valid use cases to do things as root but that doesn't mean that your gui application needs to run as root That, that means that if you open a root shell in a console, you are equally uh, vulnerable, right? Um, kind of, yes. Um, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, only if you combine it with other th things, like if, you, if a keylogger is running, then yes. Um, but um, console actually also has other problems. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that one is fixed? Really? The one Harold reported? Yeah, it's fixed in console. It's, we still have to fix it in, in Jogwik. But well, there is a warning saying you will be pwned, but at least <laughs> there's a warning. Good enough. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, what you say, it's, it's quite true. It's a fundamental problem that as soon as you switch to root um, and other applications notice it, you can do evil stuff with that on X11. Valent will fix that. Um, but anyway, what I would suggest is to applications, if you want to do something as root, use things like Polkit, use things like Chaos to delegate the actual task to a small helper binary, which is secure, which doesn't need a windowing system. Um, that would help a lot. Um, it's not actually enough to not use the windowing system because as soon as you fire up a Q core application, you also download, uh, you also allow the loading of plugins, which is automatic. So you also need to unset a huge swathe of environment variables. I will come to that later on. <laughs> <laughs> so then on X11, we have more things we can do, like we can um, get a notification whenever a window uh, changes its visual contents and then redirect that to an XPix map and use that to get a texture from it and then you render um, to a special window and that replaces all the content of X. Now that is an X11 compositing window manager but it allows to record everything you do. You can replace the compositing manager and you have no chance to really see that. You can um, render the desktop in different ways, remove a window, add another window. Um, you have no control about what really gets shown. It just replaces for core functionality of X11. And if we combine that, we can do um, interesting things like phishing attacks. That was something I had seen presented at um, XDC. Uh, so you basically just get a screenshot of a Firefox or another browser and you put another X window on top of it at the exact same position at the address bar and then you start to inject key events to the real Firefox, send it to evilbank.com and you render that you are ba at uh, bank.com with a nice green um, lock symbol so everything will look perfect but you have no chance to notice that you are actually on evilbank.com. And of course, Wayland will fix it. <laughs> well, no, it won't. <laughs> so the protocol is sane and it fixes many aspects, especially the key logging aspect. We don't get window information. We don't know which windows are there. We cannot inject input events. We have no way to screenshot. We cannot position windows manually. Um, we have the clipboard not broadcasted to all applications. So that is already a very sane and secure protocol, but it doesn't really help us as we will see later on. 
So first of all, it's not fixed in Quinn Wayland because we added additional uh, protocols which currently everybody could use. So um, we allow injecting input events, currently only mouse and touch events. That was added for KDE Connect because we uh, KDE Connect had this wonderful remote um, feature. And I wanted to use that on Wayland, so I came up with a small protocol to be able to inject mouse events so that I could use that again. Um, we have information about uh, about Windows exposed to Plasma. That's something we need for the task manager. It's uh, also, yeah, mostly needed for the task manager, also needed by KRunner, a few other things. And especially for Plasma, we allow um, Windows to pos position themselves. We want the panel to be at the position Plasma tells us. So with that, it's pretty much possible to do most of the things I just presented as well. We don't get screenshots, so that is currently not possible. And you don't get a keylogger through the protocol. There are other ways for that. So we can fix the protocols. We can choose, uh, introduce a security layer. Um, there are ideas for that for quite some time. So I had been thinking a lot about it. There's a valent security model. There was a suggestion for an authentication protocol. We could just look at the PID, UID, group, uh, group ID, and by that decide who is allowed to do what. Um, that would fix the protocol issue, but it doesn't fix the overall issue. It would move the um, trust issue just one level down. So then Quinn trusts Plasma, but how can Plasma trust the Plasma it loads? Those content is not signed. Um, the, even if it's signed, how can we trust that it doesn't do evil stuff? So um, yes, we will fix the protocols because it's important to do that, but we have to do more just by having a a secure valent protocol, we don't have a secure system. And the root problem, in my opinion, is that we have lived in a mantra which is, if it runs, it's trusted. I've heard it like that very often, that if an application is already running on your system, you're screwed. You don't have to protect against it anymore because it's connected to X. It can do so many evil things. You don't have to protect against other things. If it runs, it has to be considered trusted. <coughs> and yeah, but how did we get there? Why did we not start to protect our application against each other? And I think the main problem here is that X11 has to be too broken um, from a security perspective. Why should, for example, the accessibility extension through Dbus protect against a keylogger if you have a keylogger in X11 built in? There was just no need for that. And that is a typical thing. So we have always these things like, uh, why protect console if you can against um, executing commands when you also could inject key events? Um, just through X11. So with X11, it's just not possible to have a secure system. And then I also think that we concentrated on the wrong areas. We um, had the view that we need to protect the applications to get on the system on the first place. So um, yeah, you're screwed when you um, when the system um, when software is on your system. So we protect against that getting in, but we cannot protect to get it in. That's something we see um, in the web space with how many security issues get constantly fixed in the browsers. Also, what we always thought about was we need to prevent malicious applications to become rude. So if it's running at the, as a user, it's not that bad because it's not rude. But that's not true. If you're just because you're not shrewd does not mean that you cannot do evil things. If I'm an evil application running as your user, I can do very, very evil things, but not install additional software, which is also not true with Flatpak and Snappy and things like that. That will all be possible to install as a user. So yeah, why be rude? It's not what you're aiming for. So now, how can we get malware into the system? And for that, I think we as the Linux community don't take security really serious. And I've selected a few quotes here, which I from the last two years. 
So for one thing we had, beware of hacked ISOs if you downloaded Linux Mint on February 20th. So the, the ISOs provided by Linux Mint were exchanged with an hacked version. Then we have Monjaro forgot to upgrade their SSL certificate, suggests users get around it by changing their system clock. That's how Reddit spin it, but it was correct. That was, if you click the link, you got a warning that they forgot to upgrade their um, SSL certificate and suggested the users to just set back the system clock to be able to connect to their website again. Um, from the WebKit department we have, we regularly receive bug reports from users with very old versions of WebKit who trust their distributions to handle security for them and might not even realize they are running ancient unsafe versions of WebKit. That's a huge problem. Related to that from Debian, Therefore, browsers built upon the WebKit, Qt WebKit, and KHTML engines are included in Jesse, but not covered by security support. These browsers should not be used against untrusted websites. I have two questions to the Debian project. First of all, what is a trusted website? Second, how should a user know that he uses an application with KHTML? But not, let's not look at other project that look at us at the Qt and KDE community. So how does Qt Web Engine look like? We have currently 5.7 based on Chromium 49 with security backports up to 51. Since then, we did not have an update. So the 5.7.1 was not yet released. So what about the 48 security issues fixed in Chromium 52? They're and critical. Hmm? They're not critical. <laughs> Seriously, I, I bought them all. They're not critical, so we haven't had an emergency release. And how do I know that? Where can I find that? You can't, because we, we make no guarantees. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just proved my point. <laughs> but I don't want to blame Qt Web Engine here. It was just a nice example, because I actually looked for it and didn't find the information. Um, we also have other engines like Qt WebKit, which is now finally perhaps getting an update. And we still have KHTML. I don't want to know how many security issues are in KHTML because nobody looks at it. But why are we still releasing it? And then I asked myself, can we trust our own software, our distributed software? We don't Git tag. Um, we don't sign our Git tags. Not all of them. Some are, some are not. Our tarballs are not signed, and our info page on downloadkde.org does not use HTTPS. So how should I, as a user, figure out whether I'm using the software I'm supposed to do? At runtime, it's not much different. Our K-package system, they don't, the, the packages are not signed, so we don't have the possibility to verify whether it's correct. Also, the content of the package gets loaded at runtime without any integrity check. So you can override the package content, which is root owned in your local home directory by just putting there a different file for it. So that's a huge problem um, on our side. And that also means that we cannot make currently with the valent protocols Plasma secure because it does not have signed packages. That's something we have to introduce in our infrastructure to have a secure desktop. And now I come to um, the environment variables. So how to exploit the system in the best way. So the easiest thing is you get a drive-by download vulnerability in a browser and there or in any other application exposed to the internet, doesn't really matter. And then you just write into a glorified file like .profile, bashrc, config auto start, pam environment, that are all wonderful files to write into. And all you need to do is to set up a few environment variables, best is LD preload, and then you can take over the system. Hey, you forgot one important one. Oh, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Don't forget that now you can do local user models for systemd inside the .config .systemd, so you can start basically everything. That I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our startup process 
uh, source of the shell scripts, the environment variables are, are then set for all processes. And what's really bad is that it gets sourced before we start our session startup. So they get sourced by the login manager, they get sourced by PUM, and overall it means that our session might be owned before the first Plasma script binary is executed. So I was naive enough to think I can reorder the startup script for Quinn Wayland um, to make sure that all these variables are unset. And then David Edmondson told me, oh, it's pointless. Look at that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, what can you do if um, you own the session? You could, for example, install a keylogger into Quinn Wayland. Example code for that is on gitkde.org in my personal clone. So I thought, well, I don't wait for others to write the keylogger against Quinn. I do it myself. And it was easy. It took me 10 minutes. Um, you could uh, end that using old code. Uh, nowadays, it would be even easier. Um, you could replace the Polkit KDE authentication agent and wait till um, Polkit requests the password. You can ptrace applications to get their secrets, or you can just listen on debug. That's also always very good. So, um, yeah, could we fix some mess? Yes, we can, but it will break workflows, especially our developer workflows. We have the Linux security modules. Um, we have AppArmor as a Linux. Libsecom, and we can use that to protect our applications a little bit by disallowing wide access, disallow network access if it doesn't need it. Um, with AppArmor, we can even disallow um, certain DBus calls if your application doesn't need it. And that's something I want, at least in case Greenlocker and Quinn, to add um, Libsecom to just um, restrict what's allowed to do, that you can be sure that Quinn just cannot write out stuff to uh, files. Then we can disallow ptrace, which we did. So um, all of the applications listed here, we adjusted to um, not being able to be ptraced. Um, many distributions, uh, oh, that's a typo. It should say many applications, uh, many distributions do that by default. Um, for example, Ubuntu does it by default, but nevertheless, we should do it in uh, our own applications as well. If you're security relevant, add the ptrace uh, to the low flag. We need to change our startup. Um, we just need to make sure that all the um, scripts are no longer sourced and that we have a verified startup process, that we know the code which is running. And yes, that will break our workflows, especially for everybody who installs to opt and then has the environment variables adjusted to have the path um, loaded correctly. And yeah, we have a wonderful new technology coming up that's Flatpaks and Snap. And that gives us a new possibility to um, also partly secure aspects of the app story because it allows us to disallow write to home and we can easily disallow write to all these evil environment variables files and config files. We can with that limit access to DBus. We can use the file system portal to have the file open dialog um, outside of the, um, of the container. And um, there's also a wonderful project by Ubuntu to have one X server per X application. It's a nice way to secure X for it breaks X IPC mechanism, which may, which for me means that it's also destroying an important aspect. So I'm not convinced it's a good idea, but from a security perspective, it is. And we need to bring back the trust into our software. We need to get to where we can say if it runs, it's really trusted, which means that we need to introduce signing of K packages we need uh, to make security relevant interfaces only available for the signed um, packages. If a package is not signed, it should not be able to be a task manager. We should our, get our applications to run in a sandbox. Sandboxes don't protect completely, but it makes it more difficult. It makes it, uh, it gives another air, uh, level of defense. So that's something which we should do. Um, we should Think about whether we can authenticate our applications to the to the user. 
um, a typical example is, um, is it the lock screen or is it just an application which looks like the lock screen? And that was something we had been thinking around also with the VDG. Um, how can we make that? How can we have a, a shared secret between the user and the uh, lock screen? We, we could have things like the dedicated key combo as Windows used to have or something like user account control. It's ideas. Um, it all has drawbacks. It all has um, nice things, but it's a possibility. And um, one thing I had been thinking about was to improve the password asking experience. So a normal application which needs a password, it can be p-traced and or uh, the focus can be stolen from the window because the window manager doesn't know that this window is currently asking for a password and that the focus should not be stolen from it or that windows taking order changes stuff like that so if we would have a password asking service then the window manager would know that this is now asking for a password and we could make sure that while the password is being asked the focus cannot be stolen and we can make sure that this password is entered in a secure way and yeah last but not least i want to say that Wayland gives us the possibility to have a secure desktop, but we still need to do work. And I would say we should do it to give our users a secure desktop and uh, give them the privacy they need and should have. Can you say what you meant with uh, having API like the task manager secured? Because I can still okay. look into proc pit, right? Um, that was more like um, for Plasma internally. Like um, the task manager has a library exposed with all window informations, and that um, Plasma are not allowed to access that. So it's for managed code. Okay, as a mirror, as a mirror as an administrator of the download.ke.org, do you do you have, have any 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 ideas of securing not only the the no, downloads.ke.org main website, but also providing the providing the the mm, providing the way for securing also the, the mirror sites of the download.ke.ke.org? Um, Sorry, I think I'm the wrong person to ask that. I think that would have to go to the sysadmins. I only noticed that it doesn't have HTTPS. I was glad to see on your, your slide that you say allow user applications to run as a uh, sandbox. Are there any project uh, progress in, in making that possible? Because so far, all applications that want a sandbox had to have if it, its own set UI ID change route uh, tool or had to use anonymous namespace, which Debian has disabled for some reason a news kernel, which makes that right now a user application cannot run in, in, in a sandbox. Are there any work to fix that? I think Flatpak is the answer to that. But it might not be able to do the same. It might be restrained by the same problem that there's no general mechanism. Um, that would be then a problem for the distribution to solve. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you didn't mention the K wallet problem. Like, basically, anyone can ask a password saying it's any other application. Yeah, um, I didn't mention that because I, there are too many things to uh, talk about. But it's part of the asking for a password in a secure way thingy. But yeah, it's um, it's a huge problem that that we allow that. <laughs> So um, you said that you are adding all these protocols that are not in Wayland, but you are adding them in Queen, like um, for specific apps like uh, Plasma or itself or KD Connect or KColor Chooser or whatever. Uh, shouldn't these protocols be part of Wayland? Because then these apps won't work in Genome and the other way around. So um, yes and no. Um, for the one I, which I added to KD Connect, it might make sense. For the ones I added for Plasma, no, 
that is plasma specific that doesn't make sense to to have shared unfortunately we have only time for one more question <laughs> Uh, you mentioned uh, asking for passwords in a secure way. It, aren't passwords fundamentally broken and should be replaced by something else? Uh, sorry? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, many people think that passwords should uh, yeah, be replaced. You know, I think I got it. Um, yes, but I think that's out of our control. I mean, websites ask for passwords and... <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you. Very good. Thank you.